Which of these items can you buy the cheap version or the secondhand version? And which ones do you need to splash out on? Hey there, I'm Paula. Welcome to How to Make Dinner. The goal of this little humble little show is to help you make dinner with whatever you have lying around, even if there's nothing in the fridge. So I'm not a huge gadget person. I don't really ever purchase anything that is only good for one thing with a few exceptions. So I was just going to walk you through some of my favorite tools and the stories behind them and how I've come to the belief that they have to be acquired in a certain way. Number one is a cake mixer. So I got this thing, this is a Cuisinart brand and I bought it for $17.99 at a secondhand store and it is amazing. This thing is like turbocharged. It, ooh, it's the most powerful cake mixer I've ever had. I don't think I've ever turned it onto full blast. This is level one. Like, that's pretty serious. Want me to turn it on to full speed? You do? This thing is a beast and it's a tank and it's gonna last me, I'm confident it's gonna last me my lifetime. I spent $17.99, it was from a secondhand store. I really think that's one of the things. So I believe the reason is because it'll, when, when people started moving over to the stand mixers, the KitchenAid mixers and stuff, a lot of people got rid of their cake mixers. But there are lots of times when I prefer a cake mixer like this over a KitchenAid. For example, if you have a larger batch and you just wanna use a, a really big bowl and the KitchenAid bowl isn't big enough, cake mixers can be such so helpful. So go look secondhand for something like that and good luck to you to find a good one. The next second hand score is a potato ricer. So I actually just bought this very recently, like a few weeks ago. Just have a sip of my beer here. We're just Saturday night. We're just hanging out together and drinking beer. I hope you're into it. Cheers. Um, so I bought this a few weeks ago and I did look first at some kitchen stores and potato ricers were starting at 60 bucks, like 60 bucks for this. All it is, is a metal basket with a pusher downer plunge thingy and a handle. Like this, there's no reason why this should ever be 60 bucks. You use it to put potatoes through it to mash them smoothly and evenly. And that's pretty much it. So this is one of those uni, uni tasker things that I, that I actually do like because it does make the smoothest mashed potatoes. So long story short, I needed a potato racer. I went to a kitchen store. They were 60 bucks. I said, no thanks. I went to a second hand store and there were tons. There were like five potato racers side by side and they were $3.99 each. And they were the exact same. I think the one in the store had like some kind of, you know, um, silicone like handle so it was nicer on your hands but who cares this is great $3.99 beauty that'll last me a lifetime now we're getting into the things you can't buy in the second hand store field so tongs i hate to say it but tongs are one of those things i do like to spend a bit more money on um these ones are solid and they don't like what you want to look for is are they gonna miss each other when you clamp them down? I have two pairs, I'll pull out another one. These ones are like, they don't even have the fancy clippy thing, but they're amazing. Like I cannot twist them. You know, when you get those tongs where they're just like, they won't ever meet each other when you squeeze them closed. These have an amazing spring back as well. It's like almost hard to close. I've had these for years. They're never going to decline. I spent, I don't know, 
money on them though. You know, you, I bought them new from like a good quality, they're good quality, buy good quality tongs. That's all I'm saying. Um, okay, next up is an electric thermometer. I've talked about this before and I got a little bit of flack from somebody a little while ago for spending $50 on an electric thermometer, an instant read thermometer. But it's, remember I'm in Canada, so it was $50 Canadian. It was probably more like 35 US or something. But this thing is so reliable. I know I'm getting a good read. It's got a super fine tip, so I'm not gonna punk, puncture a giant hole in my steak or whatever I'm checking. And I just think it's worth it. I've used so many thermometers that I just can't, like, who's gonna trust it? It's like, I ruined a beef Wellington on Christmas day at my grandma's house because I forgot my thermometer and she had this like knitting needle with this giant like weird measuring system at the end. It was not, I didn't trust it. So we went to her neighbor's house to find another one to kind of double check. And her neighbor was also like in his eighties and he just had this old crappy knitting needle style one as well. So I used both of them and neither of them worked and the beef was overcooked. So I would rather spend $50 Canadian once to never overcook a beef tenderloin again. Just saying. Now, microplane. So microplanes are an amazing tool and you really can't get them in secondhand stores or any kind of cheap. You can't get a cheaper version that's, that works as well as this does. Um, I, a lot of people I talk to are like, oh yeah, I'm one of those. I got it from a secondhand store. It was a dollar. And I'm like, I know what you're talking about and it's not this. So what they're talking about is like a normal cheese grater that's on like a paddle shaped thing. It's different from a microplane. The blades are different. The blades on a microplane have like a little extra ziggy zaggy thing and they're super sharp, which is why you can grate nutmeg to a fine powder. You can grate garlic, ginger, Parmesan cheese, lemon zest. You'll never get that fine of lemon zest on this style of grater. Um, you certainly won't be able to grate nutmeg on it. You'll get like chunks of nutmeg in whatever you're making. So microplane needs to be a microplane. It needs to be a good real deal microplane. I think they're like 15 bucks, maybe 10. You'll never find them secondhand by the way, because nobody gets rid of their microplanes ever. Another thing you won't find secondhand in any kind of decent condition are knives. So I don't think I've ever seen a decent knife in a secondhand store and I am a bit of a bargain shopper. So I look all the time, I never see them. Even when you think a knife is a good quality. So if you look at these two, they're pretty similar. Like they're both the kind of like Santoku, is that what they're called? The same kind of shape of knife. But this one is cheap and shitty. It's just, if you try and cut a carrot with this, like see how I cut a carrot and it just like splinters apart. It's because of the, it's just engineering. Like this handle is too light, so it doesn't push through all the way. It's too narrow. So it kind of like flips and flops in my hand. This one is a real heavy handle. So it's actually going to slice through the carrot. No matter how sharp this one is, it's still crappy and it's never going to chop properly. I can't stand this thing. I don't even know why I have it. This is good, but it costs a bit more money, but not a ton of extra money. This is my uh, 10 inch chef's knife. I've had it since cooking school. Thanks Auntie Tracy for buying this and Uncle Colin for buying this for me when I went to culinary school. It's a Victoria Knox brand, which is really, really my favorite brand for entry level chef's knives. They're great quality. You can sharpen them. They last forever. I've had this, I went to cooking school in 2005 and it's 2000 and almost 2020. So 15 years ago, it's my, f they're so comfortable. They're very well engineered and they'll just do the trick for you. But you will, again, you'll never see these in a secondhand store because nobody gets rid of them because they're great. People only get rid of stuff that they either don't use because they don't know how to use it or that doesn't work very well or it's been replaced by something else, whatever. 
So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Obviously I have a lot of opinions about kitchenware. If you want to share your opinion, please drop it in the comments below and come back every Wednesday when I'm cooking some food. I know today wasn't really about cooking, but um, this is, this stuff is important too.